Good Monday afternoon, and thanks for joining us. I'm Charity Menifee, the Director of Communicable and Environmental Disease and Emergency Preparedness at Knox County Health Department. Our moment of gratitude today is dedicated to the many folks in our community who practice the five core principles that we have outlined in our plan while they frequented restaurants and retail businesses over the weekend. Anecdotally, we've heard positive stories about people continuing to wear masks and observe uh, physical distancing guidelines in these situations. This is our new normal and we are urging people to continue to be vigilant to slow the spread of disease. So thank you for all that you're doing. On Friday, I did a rundown of the resources that are now available on our website, including the benchmarks outlined in our reopening plan and some of the metrics that we utilize to evaluate attainment. We want to stress again that decisions to move from one phase to the next um, aren't based on just one number or figure. We look at the whole situation, the entire picture, evaluating multiple data points and trends while utilizing our public health expertise and experience in consultation with our county and city leadership. Consider this analogy. When you aren't feeling well, you go to the doctor, they interview about your symptoms and maybe do a few tests. Additionally, they then use their clinical training and judgment to make a diagnosis and determine the best way forward for you as a patient. And we're doing the same thing in public health. We're using our metrics, which are like the test, and our health expertise and experience. We are happy to provide information and answer additional questions during this format. <clears throat> but there's more metrics and there's more information that simply can't be virtually represented on a website. Um, and we tried to explain that in the plan. There's a lot to these decisions that we're making. So with that said, we know we're getting a lot of questions on um, how the data and metrics are being interpreted and those types of things. And there will be more information coming out later today to all of you guys in the media on how you can ask those questions and how we can get answers back to you. So there'll be more coming on that. We know you want to get into those nuances, um, but we're just not sure that this is the best um, environment to do that. Um, and I'm probably not the best person to provide that. And it's just very, very detailed and very complicated to explain. And we wanna get you the best answers that you can get um, in, a, in a different way. Um, with our benchmarks and the traffic light visuals on our website, know that we're trying to provide answers and information to two groups of people. There's the people that are data lovers and that love all the detail and wanna see it. And we hope that's available um, and we use that for them, what's on our website. So all of the different metrics and all of the data that we provide daily and our benchmarks. But we also did get a lot of ask from people who were on the other end of the spectrum who just really wanted a more simplified assessment of how we're doing. And that's where the red lights came in. Um, and again, using kind of that same uh, um, metaphor that we use with the doctor. So taking all the data and our opinion and putting that into that metric, those, um, those uh, traffic light signals. Um, and that's just to explain how we're doing. So moving into our local situation, we have 246 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Knox County. That is two less than we reported from yesterday. So as a reminder, again, um, like we've been explaining, um, the state gets all of the reports in and that's, those reports come to us. And then we do our investigation here on the local level and when we need to, we transfer them out of our jurisdiction when we find out that they don't live in Knox County, the cases. And that was the case um, that we saw this weekend and why you saw uh, two cases drop off today. So our team's doing a great job with those um, interviews and following up with cases quickly. Um, we too have 209 of those 246 cases have recovered. 35 individuals have been hospitalized at some point in their illness with two currently being hospitalized. And we are thankful to report that we have no additional death due to COVID or complications from COVID-19. The Knox County Health Department will continue testing this week, Monday through Thursday. In order to reduce wait times, we're asking folks to call our public information line at 865-215-5555. Again, that's 865-215-5555. People will be given a window of time to arrive for their testing. Once again, this is just to reduce the wait times. This testing is still being done through a drive-in model, and we are still encouraging folks that want to get tested to call their primary care provider first. However, 
For those pr whose providers aren't testing, please call our information line and we'll get you tested through the health department. We, along with the state, continue to look at how to expand testing while being strategic and targeted in order to reach people in need and in need and at high risk of complications. Additionally, testing is also much larger than just public health and mass testing events. Testing continues to be available at office, doctor's offices, urgent care centers, walk-in clinics, and our area hospitals. And we want to continue to see that increase and that's one of the metrics that we're looking at. We mean it in all of these settings when we talk about increased testing, not just public health. And with that said, we'll open it up for questions now. Please go ahead and submit questions into the chat feature. All right, mm -hmm. from WVLT, they said they asked on Friday and KCHD didn't have the data at the time, but what is the number of COVID-19 patients that have recovered after being placed on a ventilator? Oh, I still didn't go back and get that. And I'm not sure if that's data that we'll be putting out um, widely. I do know that we have had patients that have been on a ventilator and recovered, um, but I still don't have that information uh, to report today. We'll take a note over there. From WBIR, we all observed people not wearing masks this weekend like they should be. Did your employees at the health department see the same thing? What do they think of it? And what would the health department say to someone who says a mask is infringing on their freedom? You know, um, we heard anecdotal both ends of the spectrum. We heard a lot of people who went out that said they saw people that were doing exactly what we've been asking. And we did hear some cases um, where folks weren't. We want to go back to the reason behind wearing the mask. Um, it's to protect each other in this situation for, for people who may have the disease um, and not know it and can be spreading it. So we still encourage people to please um, wear masks um, and wash your hands and do and stay six feet away. Um, we always put these measures in our public's hands and um, for the most part people continue to do what they're supposed to do and so we ask that you continue to do that um, as, as you move forward because this isn't over and the more that people cooperate and continue to do what we're asking hopefully that curve will stay flat and we can continue to move through these phases and that's what we need to have happen in the situation. A lot of people not doing that and a lot of spread of disease and people congregating, um, we may have to revisit uh, where we are as we move forward. From the Sentinel, you said you were going to make an epidemiologist available to answer technical questions mm -hmm. about your benchmarks. So far, you have not done so either in private or press conferences. Yep. When will that person be available? That's what I just said. So we are going to make the epidemiologist available. You'll get the plan on how we're going to do that. That's just in a better format so you can get all the questions that you need asked um, asked and answered in the way that you want them um, answered. And we're working on that plan today, and you'll get it later today. From WBIR, there were several families who were out this weekend. We get that people are anxious to get out, but is it advisable to take the whole family with you? We still don't recommend you take the whole family with you. We do know that people are tired of being in the house and maybe that's a good time to go to the park together and go for a walk. But in those congregate settings where people can get together and mix germs, we really don't recommend it at this time. Again, we're still in the, we're to dip it, or tipping our, I can't talk, dipping our toe in the water here as we start to expand um, what services are out there and open. And um, we really wanna do it slowly and thoughtfully. From WATE, how many complaints came in about not following the guidelines since Friday? Have new warnings or citations been issued? I don't have that number in front of me, but I knew the staff's following up with those. From WBIR, are you happy with the amount of people who went out this weekend, or do you think people are being irresponsible? You know, I, I, I don't know. I wasn't out in large crowds a lot this weekend. I went to one place. Um, and so um, I think overall, and what we always see in public health is most people try to do the right thing and do things to protect themselves. And we just ask that people continue to do that. From the Sentinel, when can we expect COVID-like illnesses to be reported on the county website? What is your timeline? So we're working on that. I think I talked about it Friday and um, Dr. Buchanan mentioned it in some one-on-one -on -one interviews as well. There's an issue with our website and how we can show that information um, on our website and still be ADA compliant. So we're looking into it and we're still working on it. I don't know when that will be ready yet, but also I wanna point back to that's not one of our benchmarks. So there's lots of different things that we can look at, at and all of our benchmarks that we talk about in our plan and all of our other daily information is still out there. Um, so just keep that in mind as well, please. Also from the Sentinel, what are the counties that you've included in your healthcare capacity metric? 
you say that you're covering 16 counties. What are they? So I will mess up if I name them. Um, I try to name them, but it's the 15 counties that surround um, Knox County. And if you look at, i um, trying to think, I believe the Tennessee Department of Health has the public health regions identified on their website and ours would be the Knox and East regions um, counties. From WBIR, we've seen where state leaders in Utah and surely there are others warning about their inevitable second wave around September. Is Knoxville prepping for one? Can we prevent a second wave? And do you foresee another lockdown? Um, you know, those are three questions. Okay, so first of all, we expect there to be waves. There typically are with these types of illnesses that circulate around the world. Um, exactly when ours will be, we don't really know. But again, all of the things that we're doing to try to slow the spread, um, all of those five core principles that we talk about will help to slow the spread of disease in our community and um, hopefully help us be better prepared for um, when other waves come in. Um, and then what was the last bit? The last one was, do you foresee another lockdown this year? You know, again, everything is open to um, looking at what our data and our local situation um, is showing and then talking with our um, our officials on the city and ca um, county side to make those determinations. I hope not, but um, I think we have to wait and see where we are. From WATE, the State Department of Corrections is dealing with outbreaks at prisons. Has the county's inmate population been tested? Um, I know that uh, we talk with the sheriff's department um, frequently and you would want to, I would want to refer you to them for all of the specifics, but I do know that they've tested um, folks when um, there's been need if there were symptoms or anything like that. Um, and we still don't have any uh, positive cases out of the jail at this time. Um, and we are waiting on more guidance from the governor's office and from the state on how to move forward with corrections testing as well. From WBLT, can you send out the number of complaints from the week later today? Are we doing that? We can, I'm yeah. asking. Yes, we can. <laughs> Uh, from WBIR, can you reiterate and help us understand why wearing a mask is important? Does it protect you or people around you? It protects the people around you, but me wearing my mask protects you and you wearing your mask protects me. So it's a team effort in, uh, in this. And so we really want um, everybody as much as possible to be wearing them, but it's, it's preventing the spread of my germs to other people. From WATE, also with prisons, we've seen a high proportion of asymptomatic cases. Does that suggest many members of our community may be asymptomatic carriers? Well, I think the evidence shows that there are asymptomatic people that can um, transmit the disease, and there's more and more information coming out about that, which kind of goes back to those five core principles and trying to continue social distancing um, as much as we can in these times. Um, we say to treat everybody like they could be potentially infectious. And so um, I think that's something that's important, and that's what's being looked at and considered as we're waiting on our guidance to move forward with um, the correction setting as well and other, other areas. From the Sentinel, in the increased or sustained testing metric, we are currently listed as green. This metric does not appear to take into account the low levels of testing seen previously, only the increase. Can you please explain this metric? Is it literally just the increase in tests over time? Yeah, I mean, I, and again, we'll be getting more information and you can talk to our epidemiologist who's working on all of this data um, and we'll figure out, um, you'll be able to get questions to them and we'll get answers to you on this. Um, but it's, it is looking at increased testing over time and it's based on where we are right now. Um, and we have been continuing to see testing grow. And there are limitations listed on the website as well about the um, testing information that we have. Any other questions, please submit them. Uh, from WATE, have you given any guidance to schools when it comes to planning for social distancing for school resuming in the fall? We haven't gotten there yet. Um, we've been really focused on trying to get through this phase one of reopening and uh, moving forward into that. And so um, I'm, we talk to the schools regularly and we will continue to do, do so. And I'm sure we'll um, talk with them on their plans, but we haven't at this point. From WBLT, is Knox County and Tennessee going to herd immunity? Um, I think that one's really difficult at this point. Um, there's a certain percentages that you need to be at and um, uh, it's how many people have had it in the community and all of those things. Um, do we want to get to that point? Do we hope we get to that point at some, uh, at some point down the road? Yes, um, but the exact information on it, I, I don't have that right now. 
Um, we are trying to slow the spread. Um, we don't want to get to herd immunity too quickly because that can mean that our hospitals and healthcare system, um, systems get overwhelmed very quickly. And so again, everything we're doing right now is to keep, keep us moving in a flat trajectory as much as possible um, so that we can continue moving forward through the um, opening. From the Sentinel, the health department has been asked several times for the county's effective transmission rate. Where is it and what is it? Where it's not one of the measures we're using. We've talked about this. There's a lot of variables that go into that information. Um, it's not one of our benchmarks. You have a lot of data on our website that we're utilizing to make these decisions and, um, and that along with the models and those types of things, they're not the benchmarks that we're using um, as we move forward. From WATE, any plans for another remote location mass testing event like the one at the convention center? Um, right now, um, both the state and um, Knox County Health Department, we're looking at more targeted um, venues for testing and I'm working on plans for that this week and waiting for some guidance from the state on that as well. So we make sure that we're not doing things dramatically different from them. Um, to be honest, in the state's huge testing events and in ours, we just haven't seen um, a lot of positives come out of those. And so we want to be very strategic. Um, Positive cases. Sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you. We haven't seen a lot of positive cases. So, you know, out of over 500, we tested one day. I think we had six positives. One person had already been positive. So five new cases. And so we really want um, to make strategic decisions and make sure that we're getting the, to people that are at need and at high risk for complications and working with the state um, on how to do that moving forward. From the Compass on Friday, Dr. Buchanan's order covered close contact personal service businesses. Will she issue an order that includes all of the guidelines? If so, when should we expect it? We're going to have to see. Um, there, did the additional order go out Friday? Because Yes, there was okay. an amendment to the order that went out Friday. Um, if you didn't receive it, we'll, we'll be happy to resend it. So there was an additional amendment that went out, like Kelsey said, um, and uh, we'll make sure that you get it if you didn't see it. But that was meant to extend us through um, this next phase. Any other questions, please go ahead and submit them. From the Sentinel, the red and yellow statuses are nebulously defined. How are we to evaluate these as benchmarks when there appears to be no hard trigger for a policy change or clear definitions? So that goes back to what I was talking about. So we have our two groups of um, people who want all the data and the people who wanted um, some more simplified, um, how are we doing measures? Um, so there's lots of data on the website, all the daily reporting that we have available, and then the weekly um, reports of the benchmarks that we've picked are on the website. Um, and then there's the, the traffic lights, which is really meant to be pulling all of that together and using our, um, our impression of how we're doing in those metrics. Um, and we, we've said that in the plan, we've said that um, when we put the metrics and the um, information on our website, very similar to the thing I just explained of when you go to your doctor's office, that there is some judgment um, in there, and that's what we're utilizing as we move forward. Um, but with that said, again, on what the actual numbers are that will tell us if we've grown or if we should be concerned, there are mathematical, statistical formulas that are used. They're part of the similar um, uh, methods that we use for our syndromic surveillance, which are nationally used methodologies. Um, and again, we will give you a way to get information from our epidemiologist on exactly what that is moving forward. But it is a lot for me to explain in this, um, in this um, setting right now. There's a lot of information there. From WATE, is 311 still the best number for people to call with concerns about a given business following the guidelines? Yes, 311 is, and we are so grateful and appreciative of them for what they're doing and stepping up to help take this on, um, and they're doing a great job. So yes, please call 311 with those concerns. So our secondary question is, what happens when that call comes in? So... So, um, and if not, it will be sent to um, subject matter experts for different sectors, or if it's a regulatory situation um, that we, for businesses that we regulate in any type of um, way, those would come to us for follow-up as well. So there's different groups that could be following up that were part of um, the, uh, the planning process for this. From WBLT, with current testing, will it take two weeks to see any spikes after reopening? Yeah, um, our testing timeframe has... Um, 
has gotten better on getting results back, as you can see on our website, but it's actually more about incubation time. And that's where that two week window comes in because um, that's still kind of the long end for people to start showing up with symptoms. So um, two weeks is a, probably a good gauge to look. And that's the other reason that we have a full 28 days in each phase because we wanna go through two of those incubation periods to really be able to have a good idea of where we are um, in the community and how our measures are um, affecting uh, the local data. Any other questions? Please submit them now. All right, well, thank you all for joining us today. Um, we appreciate you logging in and we will see you tomorrow at 1230. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.